You are about to have your mind blown by this next speaker. I'm so excited to introduce one of my very best friends in the whole world and brand new G-Force member. He didn't know I'd be asking him to speak so soon, but he's truly inspiring. And I'm gonna to try to keep it together when he tells his story, but it's so crazy. And I just dare you to listen. I dare you to pay attention because you will view life differently after this. You have a huge and very rare opportunity to listen to somebody that is currently in Mike's position and has overcome what he's already overcome. And there's so much wisdom in this because it's very, very easy to fall into depression. It's very easy to forget why this fight is worth it because everybody on this call isn't just fighting to provide for themselves and their family. No, you stepped up and you raised your hand and said, I want to help more than just myself, more than just my family. I want to help others. I want to solve really bad things. And when you raise your hand, you're a target now. Like you're asking to defeat evil, true evil. And you can do that, but it takes the right perspective and consistently reminding yourself why. And Mike's story will give you a whole new lens to view the world with. And I'm really, really excited for you to hear it. Mike has been an engineer for the last 20 years, a, an amazing engineer for these firms that do all kinds of crazy technology. I can't even explain. He's super smart. He is an actor in SAG, if you didn't know. Famous from TV. Uh, he's traveled to over 50 countries. You're going to hear why in a little bit. MySpace influencer, guys. Original MySpace influencer. He was my very first investor, and we weren't really friends before that, and so that was really cool. That's his biggest claim to fame. Uh, he is an options trader professionally. He is an excellent husband and father, and fun fact, he claims that the original Magic Mike was made after. All right. Mike Mislowski, welcome to the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a uh, wonderful introduction. And as uh, <laughs> somebody who's known me for uh, well over a decade now, I think that's uh, uh, a very accurate description of, of what you know about me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to uh, really kind of talk about uh, some things. I think that we live in a society where you know, a lot of people maybe try to hide behind their highlight reel on Instagram. And I, I think that, you know, as time has gone on, it's, it's become very hard to be vulnerable uh, overall. So uh, Brittany and I talked, and even though I don't know many of you, I decided that, uh, you know, maybe uh, just being vulnerable and, and telling a story and uh, just, just how I've overcome quite a few things in my life uh, could maybe have an impact on some other people. So uh, that's that's one of the things that uh, that we wanted to to go over. And uh, just a forewarning, uh, you know, some of this would be very sobering, uh, a little tough to get through for me. Um, but uh, yeah, we can uh, we we can go ahead and get started, and hopefully uh, somebody will get some impact out of this. <laughs> but uh, uh, basically, what I'm kind of going over is I've uh, my, my friends, a lot of my friends know uh, a lot of details about me and my story, but um, I've always maintained myself as a very positive person. Uh, even in the midst of, of a lot of things I've gone through, I'm always, uh, you know, the type of person, I'm, I'm the first one on the dance floor, uh, you know, I'm going up and doing karaoke, uh, mostly with Brittany. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, I like to be kind of one of those, uh, uh, those those positive energies around people. So when I get around people, I'm very uh, you know, inquisitive on, I'm excited to meet them. I get around people, I just get amped up. I don't know what it is, but you know, I've always been that way. And uh, you know, doing a deep dive into why am I that way? And you know, a lot of people have, have expressed to me that, hey, you've made a big impact on my life or you know, I, I, just, I just love being around you because even when I'm down, like I, you really lift my spirits up. So uh, you know, in, in, in really doing this deep dive with, with Brittany, I, I think we've identified uh, three key steps uh, that I've taken in my life that, uh, uh, that I always am, am attentive to and that really have an impact on my life that, that keep me positive about things. And 
um, you know, repair relationships in my life and, and always give me a way to, to, to kind of find the silver lining, even in, in very, very negative things that happen in my life. So, um, you know, the three steps to finding the good is, is what we're, we're calling this. And, uh, the first step that, uh, that I've really taken or want to talk about, and, and I've taken this many times in my life is, is forgiveness and forgiveness isn't just forgiving other people it could include forgiving yourself uh you know for for things that uh you know you've done in your life that that maybe you're, you're harboring a lot of regret or uh you know or other people that have had negative impact on your life and you're you're harboring hatred or or something like that for that uh unfortunately what happens when you carry that weight on you is it creates a brick wall for you to move forward in your life. It, it, it constantly weighs you down and puts you in, in a state that just uh, it doesn't, doesn't have a, a positive impact on your life. And, and, and a lot of times prevents you, prevents you from moving forward. And that could be moving forward with repairing a critical relationship in your life or, or even just overcoming the guilt you have for something. So uh, one of the stories I wanna share is, is actually from, uh, from my childhood. And um, one of, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I wanted to talk about was the relationship I have with my mother. So back when I was uh, three years old, this is actually the first uh, memory of my childhood, but, uh, I walked into her, her the bedroom, uh, and my mom had a, a 38 revolver to her head and, uh, she was, she was crying. And at, at that point, you know, being a, being a young child and, and seeing your mom with a gun to her head and not understanding what that means and, and, and her crying, um, you know, really had a, really had a profound impact uh, on me at that point, uh, but I didn't know it yet. And um, uh, through that process, uh, the next thing that I know is that uh, uh, I ended up in the hospital and I was having an out-of-body experience. So people that talk about out-of-body experiences and, and you kind of hear like, oh, you know, that there's no way that happens. I'm, I'm here to tell you that this is a very true thing. Um, because what had happened is my mom had turned the gun on me and shot me twice. And uh, I had gotten shot in the leg, um, probably about, uh, maybe about a quarter of an inch from a main artery and also got shot in the ankle. And um, it, uh, I, I was, floating away from my body at the time and uh the i was looking down at the doctors and i was watching them work on me and i'll, I'll never forget this because the way i remember it uh in my mind is looking at these gunshot wounds as uh they looked like deep space you know when you're when you're watching star wars and and, and you know the beginning starts and it's just white dots in a black screen like that's just kind of how it it, it 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 i remember it and I'm floating backwards and, and, and I, I stop because I feel an arm around me. And we're both looking down uh, at my body and, uh, and we're just watching the doctor's work. And um, I, was, I was sent right back into my body. Um, I, I felt that push. And uh, you know, I was, uh, I was giving a, oh, man, I'm really sorry about this. Um, just, uh, no you know, apologizing, Mike. No yeah, apologizing, really, Mike. Really You're crushing it. Give Mike some love. <laughs> um, but I was sent back into my body and giving, given another lease, lease on life. So, um, you know, I, 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 I lived through that situation, and uh, you know, my mother uh, was was went to a mental institution, and my father uh, took custody of me, um, and. Uh, during that time, however, uh, from that time forward, my, my dad uh, took care of me, had to carry me around a lot. Um, he, uh, he had hurt himself as a police officer and uh, became addicted to, to painkillers and, and, and other sorts of drugs and uh, took a lot of those drugs uh, just to ease the pain to, to carry me around. And, uh, you know, there's incidents that, that happened throughout my childhood of of him getting arrested and, and taken away and uh and but but my my father raised me um but uh you know he harbored a lot of hatred for my mother for what she did 
And so I never, I never had a chance to develop a relationship with, with my mother. Um, I talked to her, uh, a few times as my dad would allow. And, uh, you know, over, over the course of that time, I, I physically saw my mother one time in a period of 10 years. Um, uh, 10 years after that. So at this point I was 13, uh, my father was remarried, uh, and my stepmother was, uh, quite emotionally abusive. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd come home, uh, from school. I typically get cussed out, uh, uh, for no reason, uh, and things of that nature. And, um, but again, even, even the silver lining in that is that this was the first time that, you know, my father had been convinced that it would be a good idea for me to go and spend time with my mom because my stepmom wanted to get me out of the house so bad that, it, it got to a point where my dad had allowed me to go see my mother for the first time in 10 years. So I, uh, I had a chance to, to go and be with my mom for a couple of weeks. And, uh, the first time that I had seen my mom, uh, I, I just remember, you know, when she brought me back to the house, she, she had a breakdown and, uh, and was bawling and, was, was profusely apologetic about what had happened when I was a child. And uh, I just remember looking at her and saying, mom, I never want to talk about this again, but I forgive you. And uh, to be 13 years old and, and uh, to, to, to have that, uh, to, to be able to do that uh, sparked a, a relationship with my mom that you know, really, uh, to this day is, is, has been magical. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what led me to, uh, having the strength to do that is I, I never really knew God. So going back to that situation when I was shot and I had an out of body experience and I felt an arm around me that sent me back to my body. I never understood what that was because I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, raised as a Christian or anything like that. But, um, you know, when I was in, a, in an abusive household, uh, you know, as a kid, you just try to stay out of the household as much as possible. So uh, in my neighborhood, uh, there was a church and, and you know, there's kids playing outside all the time. And I just became really enamored with, uh, with, with getting connected to that, to, to that church. And, you know, I, I started going as the first time I learned about, uh, you know, these sorts of principles of forgiveness and, and things of that nature. So, you know, that, that gave me the power, uh, to, um, you know, see my mom for the first time and, and, and tell her that I forgive her and start that amazing relationship. And as you could see in this picture, uh, we just took this, uh, you know, uh, less than a month ago. And my mom has, as uh, since we've had our baby has been here for a month at a time and she's so loving, so incredible. Um, Great she's just, yeah, just so so uh, it's such a great impact in my life over the years of just being such a loving, supporting mother and, uh, and now grandmother. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I wouldn't have that relationship if, you know, I harbored resentment for my mom and I, I didn't allow myself to forgive her. So, you know, I think that the important thing is, you know, to, to, to kind of round this up is that, Forgiveness can really have an impact on your life uh, in a positive way if if you don't let these the the feelings of bitterness and resentment uh, burden you and hold you down and create a brick life or a brick wall in your life and prevent you from from moving forward. So I think that you know such an important uh, thing in my life is you know making sure that I forgive. And whether that's forgiving myself uh, or, or forgiving other people, because it, it, it can repair relationships and, and it can remove the burdens that you have in your life. So <laughs> um, the, the second thing I want to talk about is gratitude. Um, this is uh, something that uh, I think so many people struggle with because a lot of times you know, we look at, uh, we look at our life and we're constantly focused on what we don't have or what we haven't accomplished or, 
you know, um, or we're comparing our lives to other people based on, you know, their highlight reels on social media and things like that. Um, you know, I, I've always lived my life with, you know, uh, it, again, being, being given a, a second lease on life at three years old, uh, has always had a major impact on me. And, and I've always felt this feeling of, of gratitude that, wow, I'm, I'm, I wake up and I'm given another day like, like that to me, life has just become such a gift. And I think that, that, that really carries through my personality. So when I get around people, you know, I, I'm, I'm always kind of just super excited to, 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 to be there and just be alive and, and be in the moment and, and seize those moments because I shouldn't even be here. And, you know, the, the fact that I've, I've, I've been given that new lease on life and, and to be able to have these experience and, and experiences and things like that is, you know, I, I, I want to I share that positive energy and, and, and share those experiences with other people. And, and it makes me so, so grateful for uh, just, just being alive. And, um, you know, I, seven weeks after my son was born, uh, uh, I ended up getting diagnosed with uh, stage four colon cancer. It's been, uh, 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 and, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm trying hard to get through this. Um, so, uh, very surprising. Um, because uh, otherwise I've, you know, felt uh, very healthy and things of that nature. And uh, just getting a, a cancer diagnosis uh, was, uh, was really hard to swallow. And, uh, you know, I've, I had just gotten bad news after bad news. Um, with every scan, with every test, um, I had to be taken in for emergency surgery, and uh, and I got uh, a foot of my colon removed, and I had a uh, a four inch tumor in my in my colon, along with uh, uh, about thirty lymph nodes, um, and six of those were cancerous, and I had found out that. Uh, that it had spread to my liver. And, um, you know, being a, a, a brand new father and being in a loving relationship and uh, just being happy for this, this new chapter in my life and then facing something like that has um, been, been very, very, very challenging. And, uh, you know, the people that I have in my life have, have created just been prayer warriors and created prayer circles around me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for, for the people that I have in my life and, and, you know, for my family and, and my wife and my son, and, and they give me the strength to, uh, to battle this. Um, as you see in the picture here, this is, this is kind of what I deal with every two weeks. I, uh, uh, I've, I've been through my third cycle of chemotherapy now. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm handling it pretty well, to be honest, uh, which, which has been great. And, um, you know, I basically go to Vanderbilt and I get an infusion, uh, pretty much all day on Friday. And then I have a, a pump connected to me for, uh, another 48 hours, which then I, I disconnect and, and I kind of go through that every two weeks. And, um, uh, you know, uh, Vanderbilt's on a path of, uh, of, a, you know, potentially beating this with, uh, maybe a liver surgery, uh, as well. And, and really they're, they're optimistic that this, this chemo regimen will, will work to shrink the cancer as well. So, you know, I wake up every morning and the first thought in my head is just extreme gratefulness that an extreme gratitude that I got to wake up that day and that I get to see that I get to see my wife and son 
Because <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's really scary. And, uh, you know, uh, stage four colon cancer doesn't really have a, a great prognosis. But if I didn't have the strength uh, that I have right now and and the people that I have in my life and, you know, to just look at life in a different way and, and instead of looking at things as, no, oh, woe is me. How did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? And they carry that negativity. And that glass half full or the glass half empty, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things glass half full because every day that I get is, is, is another day, another gift. And, you know, I, I know that, uh, you know, cause I was like this too. I know that we spend so much time focused on, you know, the kind of things in the world that drive us like our, our, our success and money and, and, uh, and things of that nature. But I'm here to tell you that when you're, uh, when you have to face the possibility of everything getting taken from you, um, those, those things won't matter. Uh, and, um, God, man, this is, uh, it's really hard. Mike is, uh, obviously sharing is something really difficult and the blessing that we all get to hear is what matters yeah you know, that, that's actually my my favorite question to ask people that have just lost everything in a hurricane so what matters to you now that didn't yeah. matter before and and i asked mike i said mike you are going to beat this in the name of jesus your will to live is too fierce you have so many incredible blessings around you you're going to beat this but the fear and the prognosis and the data and what you Google is terrifying. I said, given the gift that you have right now, if you could impart anything to everybody in G-Force, what would it be? And it's this quote here at the bottom. I'll yeah. just say it. Being grateful leads to being joyful because true happiness really comes from uh, I feel just realizing uh, the gifts that you've been given and the, the people that you have in your life. And, uh, and it's just amazing because, you know, my, my focus being on so many worldly things and, and, and just taking life for granted, like, oh yeah, I'm going to be here another 30, 40 years. And, you know, I just, I could think about that tomorrow or next month or next year. Uh, you, know, you I, I, I would give up every penny I have for one more day with my wife and son. And that's what wakes you up to what truly matters. And so that's why I'm here to just, just say like, you know, be, be grateful and, 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 and live in gratitude for, for the people you have in your life and, and, and you know, the, the, the things in your life that, uh, that, that are so, uh, so positive because, you know, um, nothing's guaranteed. You never, you never know, uh, you know, when your, when your time is up. So, but, uh, you know, I, the, the last thing I wanted to say on this is, um, uh, you know, I, I have a friend that, uh, you know, uh, recently lost, uh, the, one of her ex-boyfriends to, to cancer. And, uh, he was about my age and he had, uh, he had, he had, uh, what's considered a very curable cancer and, and went through a chemo regimen. And during his chemo regimen, um, you know, started having some issues with his liver and, and ended up with liver failure. And, uh, you know, when I was talking to her about this, you know, I, I, I was very sorry to hear that he had just passed and, and, you know, I told her, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm starting my, my chemotherapy regimen. I'm really scared about that. And, and she told me that he didn't have the will to live like you have. And so, you know, I, 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 I've been really thinking about that lately and, you know, just, just how incredible, you know, 
keeping a positive mindset and, and, and keeping a positive perspective and, and, and looking at things positively and finding the silver linings in the good. Hey, Mike, you keep covering your, uh, your speaker with your hand, I think. Oh. So keeping a positive mindset. There you go. That's good. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So keeping that positive mindset and keeping, keeping th that gratitude and, and the positive perspective uh, on life is so important. Then that's why it's important to find the good in everything and, and, and find that silver lining. Because if you don't have that, that, that positive thought and a positive uh, you know, mindset through your life and, and, and looking at your life through that sort of lens, then you'll, you'll always be unhappy and you'll, you know, that's when depression hits and, you know, you're, you, you know, you're, you, you don't get the will to live when you're faced with these types of circumstances. So, um, yeah, just being grateful is being joyful. <laughs> just remember that. And, you know, the, the, the third step that I think in, in, you know, finding the good in everything is, is, is a, a selfless love. And, um, I think this is the craziest story I've ever heard in my life. Is this <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's so, crazy. so my, my story is I'm going to talk about the story of my wife and I, and, and she's on this call and, you know, my, my good friends know her very well. And, uh, you know, this is a picture from one of our first dates and, uh, you know, we, we have a very interesting story because, um, I, I actually, uh, met her through another G-Force member that they went on a date, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> and, uh, I ended up, uh, coming on this date too, because we just kind of met together. And, um, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest. The first time I met this girl, I was, I was extremely enamored with her, uh, you know, I was a little jealous, you know, to be honest, I was like, oh man, I wish I, I could have met this type of girl on online dating, but, uh, but anyways, um, so that, that particular date, you know, my, uh, you know, my, my, my friend and I didn't, or, or uh, my friend and Debbie didn't really work out. Uh, so, um, you know, I had asked him, I was like, Hey, you know, do you mind if I talk to her, you know, you might throw me your digits or anything. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't, I, I don't know if that, you know, that's just, that, that went, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not comfortable with that. And I was like, yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so long story short, I ended up finding her on the same dating application, uh, months later and then connected with her on Instagram. And, and she, uh, subsequently ignored any advances I made on her uh, through social media for about a year. Uh, it was really romantic. I mean, he was trying to slip into her DMs. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Straight uh, up, class. <laughs> which, which is exactly how, uh, how everything's done nowadays. So, uh, so I, uh, yeah, I sent her many messages, sent her my phone number. Hey, what's your phone number? Crickets. Um, then, uh, then ran into her uh, one time uh, when my father was in town at, uh, at the restaurant she was working at. And she absolutely hooked us up, hanging out, hanging out with, uh, with my dad and I at the table and my dad and her cracking jokes. And I remember leaving that and my dad was like, man, that's the, that's the, type, that's the girl you need to date. Like, why don't you go to her? And I'm like, I've tried. <laughs> so, um, so finally, um, you know, uh, she ended up making one comment on an Instagram video uh, months later after I think muting me on Instagram. And, uh, and it was like, all right, man, this is, this is my last, my last shot. You know, I've, I've just got to go all in, go after it. So finally, uh, finally convinced her to go on a date with me. And uh, we always talk about this because uh, you know, we always talk about our first date because our first date, like we both, I mean, she went into it with, with kind of uh, you know, with some reservations and, and I went into it with a lot of excitement, but it was an amazing first date. And, uh, she, the way she tells the story, she's like, it was the best first date she'd ever had. So, uh, we really hit it off and, um, you know, we, we just really had, you know, kind of that fairy tale dating thing. And, uh, two months later, um, we find out she's pregnant and, you know, when, people find themselves in a situation like this a lot of times they 
they typically first default to selfish things of how is this going to impact my life and what am I going to do about this situation and and uh, how, how can I make this easier for me? And the amazing thing about our this was very out of order of, of what we've ever wanted. I mean, we've always wanted to do things traditionally. You know, we both grew up in, uh, grew up Christian and, and, and had these values. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, going down or having this happen to us really made us realize that like, okay, you know, we, we, a, a lot of people might take a different path here. You know, a lot of men get in the situation and they, they, they walk away, um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, they're, you know, some people may, may look to, to, to go get rid of the baby or, or something of that nature. But, you know, both of us looked at this situation that, this is bigger than ourselves. And, you know, being so, so selflessly loving in that situation to, to a child we haven't met and then choosing to selflessly love one another through this and understand, uh, you know, the difficulty and, and how, how this path has, has changed for both of us, because, you know, both of our plans and, and Hey, the path that we're, we're thinking about taking here and, you know, Demi was going around traveling around and had all, you know, plans to, to do a lot of traveling. And, and as you saw, you know, I, I had traveled the world and I love traveling. And I, I mean, I, I go on international vacations multiple times a year, you know, all, all this has changed for both of us. So, you know, I, I basically at that point had, uh, I lived downtown in Nashville and I. Mike, watch your hands. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I, I immediately um, sold my condo and uh, we found a, a, a house here in Hendersonville with a good school district and, and, and then the pandemic hit. So now we're in a situation, not only are we, we really kind of getting to know each other as quickly as possible and, um, you know, navigating through this now, you know, now we're kind of like, oh, this pandemic hit and we're together 24 seven. And, you know, sometimes people get in that situation and they, they learn nuances from each other or they, they get irritated with each other. And, and, you know, it's like, sometimes, you know, people be like, oh, I'm just going to walk away from the situation. Well, you know, now there's no walking away uh, from this, you know what I mean? And, um, and we loved each other so much through this situation. And, um, and then when, when, when Declan was born, our son was born this this was when i finally it, it it hit me all the clouds had been cleared from my life and i understood purpose more than i ever had could have imagined in my life and um i i wanted to show you a video here this demi actually captured the first moment in the hospital when i got to hold declan is there Audio on that, Britt. Eyes. Oh, my girls are goofy. <laughs> <sighs> so I'll, uh, I'll never forget that moment. And, um, you know, that, that really just, uh, you know, I feel like I, I'd struggled with purpose so much in my life. And uh, I, I feel that maybe that was because, you know, I, I viewed too many things selfishly and through a selfish lens. And, you know, when I 
had been been given such an opportunity to just love selflessly and it just tied everything together and made me so grateful to be in this chapter in life and so grateful for having a beautiful baby boy and so grateful for having such such a loving uh, woman in my corner and uh you know, we, we got married uh, back in the beginning of October. And um, <laughs> I will say that, uh, you know, we actually had COVID uh, <laughs> through this wedding, but that didn't stop us. And um, I, uh, you know, it, it was just such a, such a happy moment for us. And, you know, this, this life that we have now um, was created out of this selfless love and, 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 uh, these selfless moments that we have for each other. And uh, I just, I just couldn't be happier, or more grateful uh, for what I have in my life right now. And, you know, that's why I said earlier, I mean, I would give up everything I had, everything for one more day with my wife and son. So all I can, all I can ask you is, you know, are, are you loving selfishly or selflessly because it will have a huge impact on your life so i want to go through this story for those of you who you know jumped on the call and are listening in so mike again i said how do you find the good because i know him he's been in my life for 11 years and this guy is like one of our he's our funnest friend he's a party in a box he's the biggest goofball and he's, he's a light to everybody. He makes everybody want to just like live and go for it. And I said, for this call, I said, how do you find the good in everything? He said, really, it's three things. And if you pick a part, and you guys are only hearing a little bit of his story. His story is even crazier than this. Like he's, he live, he's like a cat. I don't know how he keeps living through these things, but he gets shot by his mom. And because he forgave her, he, after not talking to her for 10 years and having bitterness poured into his life from his dad, is any good dad who has a son shot would, you know, <laughs> I'm sure he's not a fan of that, but he chooses to forgive at a very immature age. And now his mom is in his life, like helping with the new baby, helping during the chemo, like complete blessing and just like making their life doable right now. And if he didn't choose to forgive, he wouldn't have this incredible blessing in his life now again she was apologetic we don't you know we're not proponents of staying in abusive relationships but she she came to she's apologized she's healed and and their relationship got to heal number two he's the singer he's the dancer in life and he's waking up every morning and finding what to be grateful for with stage four cancer and a seven week old baby at the time like he was giving me tips because i fall into you know, I get sad all the time. I don't want to keep doing stuff. I'm tired. I'm the, I'm grumpy. I'm angry, whatever it is. And Mike's over here telling me what really matters again. And it helps G it helps that we as a community make money for more than just ourselves. But I've watched Mike in the different phases. I've watched when he cares about stuff. I've watched when he cares about affirmation. I've watched when he cares about alcohol or whatever it is that is our temporary high. And to see him over and over again, just be this adoring father, be this adoring husband, be fully present in conversation, just dive deeper into these relationships has been so inspiring to all of us. We've got a little circle in Nashville and it's been amazing to see this person wake up so powerfully. And if you didn't catch number three, he literally, meets this girl, they get pregnant within two months. I was there, I'm the friend they're talking to. That was a scary time for both of them. They did choose to step up and now they got us so cool. He literally gives him a baby before chemo could potentially mess any of that up. He gives him a support system. He gives him the home, the area, the everything and the perfect situation for them to completely fall in love during COVID. Like he stabilized him before he went on this part of his journey. And now he's a member of Jeep Force and we get to completely love on him, support him, pray for him. If you guys want to continue being on the bandwagon of going 150% with Mike on this journey, 
shove some love in the chat. Sorry, I just love you, Mike. And I, uh, I love this group. And I'm so grateful to uh, hear your story and to just see just the divinity in all of it. And um, I love watching you and Demi and you guys are a light. Not everything in life is perfect, but you guys just both laugh and roll with it. Like Mike's chemo picture, he's actually like modeling his port. <laughs> they were talking about funny names for his port. He's <laughs> finding a way and I just love it. So, I mean, go back to you, but it's so powerful, Mike. It's so powerful. So did you want to say anything about tips on how to find the silver lining. Any final tips on this before we keep going? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I just encourage everyone to, to just really, you know, think about these things. And, and I know we're, we're so distracted by, you know, again, social media and, and you know, our, our, our worldly pursuits and things of that nature. But um, yeah, I just, uh, it, it's just so important to realize that, that life is a gift and, and life is short. Um, I'm here to tell you life can be very, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm fighting to live as long as I can right now and, uh, and stay positive about that and, and watch my son grow up and, uh, you know, support my wife. Uh, you know, and I just, I, I just, I think, you know, these things have been just very, very, very powerful things uh, in my life to, to keep positive through, uh, you know, so many difficult times. And, and I've, I've, you know, everybody's dealing with something. Everyone's, you know, anybody you talk to, if, if they're not vulnerable to, to share their story, just know that everybody's going through something. And I think that uh, if, if we can open up more and be vulnerable and, uh, and, and encourage each other more through, through these things that we've gotten through. I think that, uh, that people would be able to, to, to maybe have a bit more hope and see the silver lining more. So, yeah, I, I would encourage everyone to just, you know, if be, to be vulnerable and share your stories and, 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 you know, maybe it'll have an impact on, on other people. And that's something I've really struggled with myself. And, you know, this is, uh, outside of my close circle of friends this is kind of the first time that I've uh, just opened up and be very, very vulnerable with, with people that, you know, some people I don't, I, I don't know, you know, so um, yeah. That's, you that's don't know that. yet, but we look forward to you getting to know everybody guys. This is Mike's Instagram and his Facebook, but now is your chance. You guys have a chance to ask somebody in Mike's position, any question you want right now. Who's got a question or something they want to say? Uh, I'll go. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, um, I can hear you. So, oh gosh, Michael. Um, dang it. It's all right, man. I, I know this, this is really heavy stuff. <laughs> Wasn't feeling that earlier, but <clears throat> man, I like, we will be praying for you. And I, and I mean that I'm not just going to flippantly say that, uh, but follow that up. But I, I like want to commend you for your vulnerability um, in sharing that and even just the perspective. Um, Thank you. And I, I wholeheartedly believe with what everybody else is saying, like with, you know, your zeal for life, like believe that I, I, I do believe that you're going to live a full and happy life and, and many, many years to come, like pray for that to happen. Um, but I just want to thank you for like your perspective. Um, and I just want to encourage you and inspire you that like your testimony is vulnerable, but it shifts things. Um, so I, I lost my dad, uh, to cancer when I was uh, six, um, but I his his perspective on life like impacts so many areas of my life even to this day, um, and I you know the whole thing even like you know the the your love for your wife your love for your son all of those things and I'm just like I just want to encourage you and bless you like he his legacy is lived on 
30 years or 25 years, whatever past his, his death, but it still has stuck with me. And I just want to bless you like to not, to not, um, to not go dark or to not shut up about your testimony or even like the realness of what you battle, because I, there's so much strength in you being vulnerable and you sharing that, like it, it inspires everybody. It, and then we, we all take life for granted so freaking quickly. Uh, whereas just like you said, like I would give up everything for just another day with, you know, with my wife and girls. And I, I, we need to be reminded of that. You know, we've got one chance on life. Uh, and so Absolutely. I just want to thank you for sharing. Um, and we will be praying uh, for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing as well. Um, you know, uh, about your father and uh, for the encouragement. I, I really appreciate that. Hey, hey, Michael, it's Anil here. Hey. So you're the guy that got shot twice, correct? Yeah. So you're bulletproof. <laughs> pretty much yeah so i've always what uh... chance what <laughs> chance do these microbes have against you none you're bigger than this you know you talked about the glass being half full it ain't half full my friend it's full full that's it's right refillable <laughs> okay yeah. you are going to tell declan this amazing story Hey, son, you know what happened a few years ago? These microbes entered my body and they thought they were going to win, but not a chance. I'm going to tell you this amazing story. And you know, 100% of survivors thrive. Did you know that? They, I, I didn't. And that's, that, that's good. That's good stats right there. Yeah, 100%. You know, you go into a dark room late at night, you flick the switch. You turn the light on, correct? You don't remove the negativity, correct? Right. Michael, you are the light. You are the light. And you always will be the light. You're inspiring, you're loving, you're caring. And you said something interesting. You said that you, wasn't, you weren't supposed to live. That's bullshit. You were supposed to live. <laughs> okay, there's a reason you're here. Don't forget that. Thank you. I really you will fight you. this. You will win this. You must win this. I'll support you. Everyone will support you. I can give you 13 things that you could do immediately that will fight this. Perfect. We'll support you. We have you. We'll do whatever we can. I have people who can create miracles for you. Awesome. I appreciate okay. that. And, All right, and brother. I, did, I, I did get your... Uh, uh, number last time. So, um, I'll send you a text and I'd love to talk to you about that. If you don't you know, you call me, I'm going to send John back. Guyton round. <laughs> and you better not hold back on those 13 things. You better put it in the G force group. Please. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank wow. you so much. Okay. Michael, who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Who? I'm, I'm a survivor, baby. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not a survivor. You're a thriver. I am Michael Maslowski. Bullets cannot hurt me. I'm bulletproof. <laughs> bulletproof. Okay. Let me hear that. Um, I am. My name is Michael Maslowski, and I am bulletproof, and I will thrive. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Oh man, it's. It's so wonderful hearing your full story. I've known you for so long too, but it's still so powerful. Um, I mean, going through everything you've gone through, I don't know how you you shake it off and stay positive. Like, like when you start getting in your head or start thinking about things, I mean, do you do a dance do a jig say a <laughs> prayer like what do you do well i, I sing i sing uh, living on a prayer like we uh, always would do ah, at karaoke <laughs> awesome awesome i'm here yeah. with penelope and and i see oh uh, i love seeing your baby and and hearing how much purpose you said you have with a kid i mean it's it really is amazing i'm so oh, happy you have him it absolutely is. And, and I, I, I saw somebody make a comment up here that, uh, um, you know, the, the, 
the order may seem I was, uh, oh yeah, Robert Eddy. I know the order may seem all mixed up, but you were given a new reason to fight just weeks before finding out you were in a fight for your life. And that, I, I, I can't even reiterate how true that is because I feel that I would be, you know, could be possibly in a different place at this, you know, what if I found out my cancer, you know, a year and a half or two years ago when I'm, you know, a, a bachelor living in a condo in downtown Nashville, you know, would, would I, would I have the same, uh, you know, motivation and fight uh, that mm -hmm. I have now, I, you know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. that's so true because, you know, again, every day I wake up and I'm just, I'm so grateful for uh, another day to spend with my wife and son. And that gives me incredible power uh, that, that I can't even explain. And um, uh, it's, it's just, uh, it just, it just keeps me going. And, um, you know, and, and, and keeps me positive about this and keeps me hopeful uh, about, uh, you know, overcoming this. And I, and I feel just every day, I just feel just, just more, more positive about it and more, you know, just like, you know, yes, you know, this, this is going to work. Everything's going to be good. And, uh, and, and, and it, it's just, it, it's great to be on that path. You know what I mean? So uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They, uh, uh, you know, they are just, uh, a, a next level motivation. And, and like I said, it just gave me purpose, uh, that, that unlike I could have ever imagined. Um, you know, it would be indescribable to my former self. Cause you know, I also have gone to a lot of Tony Robbins events and, and, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of trying to figure out your purpose and your why and everything. And just, uh, I know fully what that is now. And, um, man, that just, that just really changes my life in, you know, in so many ways. I love it. Anybody else have any questions or comments you want to make? I would like to say something to Mike. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank you. I know everybody is thanking you, but I just have to say, especially thank you for sharing something that was like rift in the universe level devastation. I am, um, it was such a good reminder for me personally. I had a cancer diagnosis back in 2011. Wow. And I remember my boys were little, very little um, preschool and first grade. And I remember the whole time uh, leading up to my surgery thinking, I was a single mom. I was like, what, what happens to my family? You know, what, what happens to my boys? They had different fathers and I wore a lot of guilt about, you know, that and lots of other things that really didn't matter at the end of the day. Um, but what happens to my family if I'm not the thing that holds us together anymore? And it did make me reevaluate lots of things in my life, but sadly removed myself nine years from, you know, I'm cancer free and, um, thank God for that every single day. But I still allowed myself to take things for granted. I got to a place where I again have started to, and you, you made me realize how far um, I thought I was removed from that. And I started taking things for granted again. And um, I, I have found myself in the last three weeks specifically trying to slip back, Satan pulling me back and trying to slip back and, and rob me and say that I, I don't deserve the things that I'm working towards and here come the attacks again. You're not that you're not different than the woman you were 10 years ago. You haven't done that much work, you know, trying to pull me back into that old life. And this was just a really good reminder that I'm not here for me. And uh, your story is changing lives, just like every one of us have something that can save or change somebody else's life. And Thank you for bringing that back to the forefront for all of us. Um, you're amazing and an inspiration. I'm just grateful to get to know you at least through GeForce. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And, and thank you for, for sharing your story too. I mean, when you guys, uh, you know, coming on here during this, this Q and A session and, and, and being vulnerable and sharing, you know, things from your past and, and, you know, maybe how cancer has impacted you or your family. And, uh, and I just 
I, I really appreciate that too, because, you know, it just kind of shows me that, uh, you know, Hey, we're all human and we're, we're, we're all in this together and, and we're all dealing with, with, with different things at different times in our life. And, um, yeah, it just, uh, it, it, that's just such a, such a positive thing for everybody when, when people can just be vulnerable and, uh, and, and, and be open to, uh, you know, to, to receiving these sorts of things and, and, and receiving any sort of impact that, that these stories can have on their life and, and, and make us focus on a better path. So I appreciate you sharing that. I love it. Awesome. Well, Mike has got a special challenge for all of you on how you can be a force for good during this time. Mike, take it away. Well, um, as I mentioned, uh, every day that I wake up, I'm very, very grateful for, uh, and this is the second I wake up, I'm just like, wow, I, I woke up and I'm conscious and I realize that I have another day, uh, have another day with my, my wife and son. I have another day you know, to uh, make an impact on, on somebody's life or, or spend with my friends. So I would challenge you, you know, for, for at least a week, the, just, just as soon as you wake up, just write it down. Like, what, what are you grateful for in that moment? Because I think that, that to me is the most powerful time because you, you've just come out of being in, in an unconscious state, you know, and, and, you know, now it's just like, wow, I woke up, I'm alive, you know, what am I grateful for right then and there? Cause I think that's going to be, you know, just, uh, the, the, the truest form of your gratitude. And, um, you know, with Thanksgiving coming up to, you know, kind of getting back to, you know, uh, you know, forgiveness and, and, and the selfless love is, you know, maybe you might have, have an opportunity to have a deep, meaningful conversation with a loved one that you haven't had in a long time. I think that, um, sometimes we, kind of keep things too surfacey uh because we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to open up uh things that we we just don't want to deal with emotionally or we don't want to um you know uh, over overcome that that those challenges in that relationship to make it better so maybe maybe thanksgiving could be that time that you could you could have that deep meaningful conversation with, with somebody that uh that that can maybe repair uh that relationship i love it Awesome. Who is going to do this challenge? Mike, you're just reminding us, you know, you know, we never know how long we have or your family members. And so I challenge you all over Thanksgiving to do what Mike's saying, but be really present. Don't try to prove any points to anybody or have prideful throwdowns. Just love them. Love them like it's your last conversation every time it ends up being a really beautiful life. So thank you, Mike. You are an absolute inspiration. Absolutely. And I'm so grateful to know you. Everybody, go and may the force for good be with you. Post your top takeaways. We love you. Have a good week.